Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Erica Angel. If you're a returning subscriber, what's up? Welcome back. I missed you. First of all, can I get a round of applause for getting ready today? Because it was a rainy day. Y a mí me da una pinche hueva, dude. You already know how it is when it's a rainy day. I don't even want to get out of bed. Y me pongo toda huevona. Like, I just want to be in bed all cozy. But today, I had a very productive day. I got up. Medio me arreglé. I had a meeting. Después fui a empacar órdenes de mi tienda Velvet Angel. Que de por sí, mi jacket y mis pestañas son de Velvet Angel. Oh, and my necklace too. Oh my God, dude. I feel like this look just came together so well. Then we went to go get some burgers at Pete's in Paramount. Wait, actually, it's in Southgate. Well, if you know, you know, the burgers there are fucking bomb. I went with my parents. It was some quality time much needed because I missed my parents a lot. And now I'm home y pues me arreglé. And we're actually having a huge sale for the month of November. There's so many items as low as $1.99. We have a lot of items for $6.99, 5 bucks. 10 bucks. Y hay cosas bien bonitas, eh? So if you haven't done your Christmas shopping, la neta, dude, yo les recomiendo que vayan and get some good deals. Porque, una, ok, bajita la llave, unas de las cosas que están allí en el sale están ahí porque nomás quedan poquitas. And they're basically like a wholesale price. So, yo sé lo que les digo y aprovechen. Así que pásele, pásele. Dude, you know what would hit different right now? Ese atole rosita. Like the maicena one. I saw a TikTok last time and it said, Growing up is realizing that the pink atole, the maicena one one is tubby custard i think that's what it's called what the teletubbies eat and i'm like dude me and my sister always said it was that <laughs> that's crazy that other people think that too though that's fucking dope the pink one is so fucking bomb i did it with oat milk last year oh my god dude it'll be so bomb if you make some right now while you watch my video and eh, that's a bomb idea all cozy also i hope you guys had a great halloween i didn't see no kids at all in my street they're like let's go to the big houses porque hay de los dulces más grandes <laughs> Dude, that was me as fuck, though. And it's true. If anything, whatever. Me hicieron un paro. More candy for me. And with that being said, Halloween is now over. And I wanted to give you guys a break from the ghost or paranormal stories. Así que hoy les tengo una historia que pasó en la vida real. La neta, yo ni siquiera sabía de esta historia. When I heard about it, I was like, dude, no mames. It hit so close to home because this happened in Tijuana. Like, bitch, that's two hours away from me. I'm glad I'm not doing my makeup today, by the way, on camera. Because I feel like some people click my videos and they're probably like, en la madre. <laughs> I look how bomb on the thumbnail and they click the video. And I'm like, hella catfish. <laughs> Pero ni pedo. If anything, I'm giving you guys a paro too. Because I teach you guys how to look bomb with makeup. Okay, so now, serious mode on. La historia que les tengo hoy, ustedes ya tienen una idea con el título de este video. Y esta historia es de una tamalera asesina. This story happened in Tijuana, México, en el año 1991. Not too long ago, right? Fucking crazy. This actually happened in a very busy part of Tijuana. It's a place that they called Cinco y Diez. And this is one of those places donde se juntan muchos street vendors. You know how there's those little random places in Mexico donde venden CDs, hot dogs, tacos, quesadillas, tamales, newspapers, you name it. Like, venden de todo. Haz de cuenta como si eres de la Ciudad de México, como afuera de los metros cuando venden muchas cosas, pues era un lugar así. Y también en ese lugar, there was actually a hospital. So people that would wait for their loved ones, sometimes they would go outside to hang around there, see what people were selling, or if they would get hungry, salían a echarse un taco o un tamal. 
Otra gente ya no más iba a comer because it was a really well known place for street vendors, like I said. Así que se hacía un genterío. And one of those street vendors was named Verónica, also known as Doña Vero or Doña Verito. Ella tenía 60 años y tenía una clientela. She was pretty successful. She would sell tamales, burritos, champurrado y avena. Los clientes de Doña Verito ya le tenían mucho cariño porque dicen que ella daba una vibra así como de confianza. Caía bien la vieja. Era como de esas señoras that have like a really sweet vibe. They mentioned que tenía una cara de ternura. So, era chingaquedito la señora. <risa> Yo creo que sí. You know how some señoras be sneaky? Así tipo que te dan una cara like, oh, I am nice as fuck y son bien cabronas. Well, I think she was one of those because you know how the story goes. También mucha gente le tenía confianza porque dicen que su puesto estaba impecable de limpio. Era una señora súper limpia y eso a los clientes les daba más confianza de ir a seguirle comprando sus deliciosos tamales. Todos los días Doña Vero preparaba comida para ir a venderla a las 5 de la mañana. So she would start her shift at 5 a.m. and she would leave until she would sell everything. And people say that she would sell everything because her tamales were that bomb. Doña Verito's main focus was to maintain her family. She did have a husband who was 65 years old and his name was Don Efren. Y también she had a son with Down syndrome and he was 37 years old. Her puesto had so many years of success until this day came. And this was on April 1991, around 10 a.m. It was a regular day. The street vendors ya se habían puesto. Ya se estaba juntando la clientela. Había mucha gente del hospital comprando. And you know how like when you buy something, te paras allá a comértelo? You know what I mean? Like te lo chingas allá en chinga. Aunque no haya mesas ni nada. Pues a Doña Verito se le juntaron los clientes. Y entre esos clientes había un señor de 30 años. El señor se estaba chingando su tamal. And all of a sudden, the señor spit out his food, started screaming at Doña Verito and cussing her out. The señor was screaming that he bit into his tamal and there was a human finger. Soon enough, the señor started throwing up. No hombre, pues hizo un pinche desmadre. Habían siete personas ahí esperando o comiendo alrededor del puesto. Todos se quedaron súper confundidos Looking at the señor, looking at Doña Verito, like what the fuck is going on? Se armó un desmadre también con la otra gente que estaba comprando con otros vendedores. It caused a very big scene. Everyone started panicking. Y nomás imagínense, dude. El señor que le acaba de morder al tamal diciéndole, pinche vieja loca, que me salió un pinche dedo. Nomás imagínense estar ahí comiéndote tu tamal bien a gusto con tu champurrado and hearing that when you guys both bought it from the same lady. Oh my God, dude. Qué pinche terror. Doña Verito ended up telling the 30-year-old man that probablemente era un dedo de gallina. El señor dijo, ni madres. No dijo ni madres, pero pues no se la creyó. Yo creo él pensó, este es un pinche dedo de humano a huevo. I feel like that would be pretty obvious. Like a chicken finger and a human finger. Like, dude, nice try, vieja loca, but... That is way off. And she probably said that porque en México, o a lo mejor aquí también, but honestly, casi no se ve mucho like seeing people selling food con patas de gallina porque en la Ciudad de México, they literally eat it with caldo de pollo, con los esquites y con muchas cosas. So that's probably like, <laughs> she tried to say that lie, pero no pegó. When that whole scene was going on, the security guards from the hospital noticed And they called the cops. The cops got there. Their names were Rodriguez and Castillo. Le enseñaron el tamal a los oficiales también. Y detuvieron a Doña Vero. The señor who threw up and two other witnesses that were there 
went to the police station and they were explaining everything that was going on. Doña Verito just kept denying and denying and denying. Dicen que se miraba bien espantada. She looked so nervous. She even said que a lo mejor la carnicería le dieron la carne con el dedo. Dude, le trató de echar la bronca a la carnicería. A day passed and they told her that they were going to go investigate her home. As soon as they told her that, she started confessing. She told the officers that she had murdered her husband porque no le quería ayudar a hacer la vena. Entonces se lo chingó, dude. She stabbed him in the back while he was off guard. And guys, you probably think, okay, the story is over. A guy ate a fucking tamal con un dedo. But no, this story gets even worse. Once they went to investigate Doña Verito's home, they noticed that the floors were super oily and they ended up walking into a room where the walls were filled with blood. Caminaron un poquito más para atrás y había como tipo una warehouse. The officers entered and you won't believe what they found. They found cats and dogs in recipientes. And then, encontraron la mitad de un cuerpo mezclado con ingredientes para los tamales. Turns out that Doña Verito and her husband would go around Tijuana getting stray cats and stray dogs to make them into meat para las comidas que vendían. I know, dude. Pobrecitos los perritos y los gatitos también. Dude, I always feel so bad for them. I remember one time, there was a perrita that looked like a hyena, like a hyena. And I still think about her every day. It's on my bucket list to get a couple of stray dogs from TJ. And bring them here. Oh, imagine. But yeah, guys, pobrecitos los perritos. And the story no se acaba aquí, eh? It still gets worse. It's crazy because I remember for a while there was like a bunch of rumors about Tijuana. Que cocinaban perros y gatos. And I'm like, is this where all of that came from? Y pues también hay bien harta gente coda. That they'll literally be like, pues hay que cocinar unos perros. Ay no, dude. Ahora voy a esconder a mi Goofy. Más como está bien bueno ni bien algón. Ese me lo hacen en carnitas. Ay, oh, pobrecito. De ahí tienen carnitas como para seis meses. So Doña Verito was found guilty and she was sentenced. They say that her only worry was her 37-year-old son because he had Down syndrome. And she just wanted to make sure he was going to be good. And it's sad because he ended up dying of sadness. She spent her last days in prison y la gente cuenta que en la casa de Doña Verito, there's a lot of paranormal activity going on. Not only because of what she did, but because when the cops investigated, they also found libros de satanismo, objetos de magia negra, de brujería, así tipo como que hacía rituales. And it turns out that her and her husband would first sacrifice the animals y ya después le sacaban la carne para meterlo a los tamales. So not only were they tamales de perro y de gato y de humano, eran tamales embrujados también. Era una pinche bruja. And since in her home there was a lot of stuff about satanic rituals, who knows, what if she sacrificed her husband as well? This story is just so crazy porque ella, todos la conocían como una señora de buena mano. De esas que son buenísimas para cocinar. Y la señora pues estaba bien loca. Now just imagine guys, all the people that ate dog meat and cat meat and even human meat without knowing. Y más enfrente de un hospital, imagínense, todos los doctores, las enfermeras, los pacientes, las personas que estaban ahí esperando, porque dicen que tenían clientela. Also, recently I did start a podcast with my wubby and I've been opening up a lot. I feel like a lot of people, they need to get to know me, do like so much better. Mucha gente no me conoce. No me conoce. <laughs> For real though, I feel like people have an image of me 
in their head that's not me así que vayan y apoyen el canal del podcast porque we need to reach a thousand subscribers so we can start monetizing so please 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 háganme el paro and go subscribe we're currently uploading on the Wovi Fam channel and I'm so glad so many of you guys are fucking with it if you guys liked it make sure you give me a thumbs up down below like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you can be notified for the next video and yeah guys I love you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Peace!